Today we're going to take a look at the Legendary Axe for the TurboGrafx-16. This was a launch title for the system that was released in 1989. The Legendary Axe is an adventure game where the hero Gogon, with his trusty Axe Sting, sets out to rescue his girlfriend Flair who was kidnapped by Jagu. The Legendary Axe has an ancient setting. The main character wears a loincloth and resembles Tarzan. The stages are a mix of jungles, caves, mountains, waterfalls, and temples. Each stage is well detailed and takes advantage of the TurboGrafx color capabilities. The stages are linear for the most part, though there are alternate areas you can explore in some stages to find extra items. Then there's the Pits of Madness, which is the most complex part of the game. It's a series of hallways with doors that you have to go through, with some spots where you can go down a tube which leads you to another doorway. Going through the right door will take you further along in a stage, but go through the wrong door and you go back and repeat the process again. To get through this level, you have to figure it out for yourself. Have fun. Your only weapon in this game is the axe which can be powered up. When you start out, your axe is at its weakest level, which can destroy small enemies like bats with a single hit, but it'll take multiple hits to destroy larger enemies. You'll come across Jagu idols, which conceal items like crystals for extra points, health restoration orbs, one-ups, and power supplies, which increases the strength of your axe as indicated by a meter at the top of the screen. The strength of your attacks depends on how much the power meter is filled. Each time you swing the axe, the power meter depletes and refills over time. If you're constantly swinging the axe, you will do minimal damage to enemies since the meter doesn't have a chance to refill. In the later stages, you have to be more patient with swinging the axe since enemies take many more hits to defeat. There is also a wing power up that you can pick up which increases the speed in which the power meter fills. The axe can be powered up to 4 levels. If you lose a life, you will resume play at a checkpoint and your axe is powered down one level, but you can usually find a power supply at the nearest Jagu idol you come across. The Legendary Axe has a solid mix of enemies to deal with. The most common enemy you will come across in this game are the Nomads. They wield an axe like you do and they come in different colors. Each color represents the different abilities of the Nomads. They have different moving, jumping, and attack patterns and some will throw axes. There are some Nomads that can block your attacks. You have flying enemies like bats and moths that fly around the screen. They're harmless for the most part except for when you're jumping over a ledge. There are other flying enemies like eagles and aqualungs that'll home in on you. Rockmen disguise themselves as boulders and reveal their true form when you approach them. One of the more annoying enemies are the frogmen who jump out of the water and spit fireballs at you. The toughest enemies to deal with are the cavemen and Punjabis who wield clubs and spears and can dish out serious damage. The one enemy you want to avoid at all costs are the monkeys which will cling on to you and quickly drain your life. The Legendary Axe is known for its difficulty and a lot of that stems from getting knocked back and falling into a pit when you're hit by enemies. This is reminiscent of games like Castlevania Ninja Gaiden. Watch out if you're standing at the edge of a platform and be alert when jumping from one platform to the next. You'll never know what awaits you on the other side. It helps to memorize the enemy placement and their movement and attack patterns. You also have to deal with tricky platform jumping as well. In some areas you have to swing from vine to vine and you have to time the jumps just right or else you'll fall. Think jungle hunt. One of the tougher platform jumping sections in this game is the waterfall stage where you have to jump on a series of small stone blocks while dealing with the frogmen. If the frogmen don't get you, the jumping will. You can control the height and length of your jumps and change direction mid-air, but it's easy to mistime a jump and fall to your death. I guarantee you'll lose plenty of lives going through the waterfall section the first time around. It still happens to me from time to time. Another factor in the difficulty is that you start with only two lives and extra lives are not abundant. You're limited to three continues, but you can input a code to increase that number. The Legendary Axe is a game that has earned its praise over the years and was a great launch title that gave you a reason to own a TurboGrafx back then. I first got my copy back in 1991 and it gave me hours of enjoyment and frustration. The graphical presentation is well done with lots of details and colors in both the backgrounds and sprites. The large size of the final boss was a selling point for this game. The game has an excellent soundtrack with a great sense of spookiness to it. I enjoy the sound effects of the axe making contact with an enemy, especially at full power, along with the explosions when you defeat some of the larger foes. One of the big selling points of the legendary axe is the challenge. I like the variety of platforming you have to do along with the enemy placement. 
The Pits of Badness is a challenge, but it didn't take me long to figure out how to get through it, so try to get through that part without using an online guide. In the later levels, a sense of hopelessness kicks in with some of the obstacles you have to deal with, but it's designed for you to figure out how to get through it by trial and error, and that is what gives this game replay value. Believe me, I was frustrated like hell and I let out a few words, but if you keep on going, you'll eventually get through it and trust me, you will feel a great sense of accomplishment when you complete this game. I felt that way when I defeated Jagu, considering it took 25 years longer than expected. There really isn't much I have in terms of negatives other than the occasional misstep when it comes to jumping and that in some spots late in the game, you have strong enemies placed near a Jagu idol. Sometimes I end up wasting a strong attack on the idol when I thought I had made contact with the enemy. You have to watch out for that. The Legendary Axe is an absolute must-own title for the Turbo Graphics and is reasonably priced given its level of praise and limited distribution. Sadly, it has never been released for the Virtual Console or the PlayStation Store, so you'll have to go with the emulation route if you don't own a Turbo Graphics. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.